Our speaker is Cassandra Smith. She is the coordinator for the mobile boutique White Pony Express. Is that also in California or yes. both um, in California? She will tell you about what they are doing here in Myrtle Beach and probably give you some background for those who don't know about the White Pony Express in California and how successful that program has been since 2013. It has actually become an award-winning model program out there um, and has really fed and clothed hundreds of thousands of people. So with that, Cassandra, okay. Let me start by saying how lovely it is to be here. I've heard so much about you folks and the work you do and how much that's appreciated. So um, I just wanted to, to start with a thank you. And um, that uh, it's our hope, like speaking, I think, for all my friends, that we continue the lovely relationship that's been developed so far. So um, I think, as Dennis said, uh, I uh, am here from um, California. The White Pony Express is a 5013C that was established in um, Contra Costa County in California. And uh, the idea was that um, there were, as, as I'm sure is pretty much the same throughout the entire country, to begin with the food, the grocery stores were throwing food into their dumpsters and locking their dumpsters. And uh, people who didn't have food couldn't get food. And so uh, we did some exploratory work to determine if we could help in that situation to connect the, the food from the grocery stores with the people who needed it. And that was the uh, seed point of the food rescue operation. And um, so on the food side, we uh, began by going around to local grocery stores and trying to explain who we were and what we did. and. Um, then we connected with agencies in our county who feed impoverished people. We don't, weren't and don't deal directly uh, with the people. We deal with the agencies who serve the people. So very, very quickly, the uh, food um, organization picked up off the ground. And we were all amazed at how quickly that happened. I remember that when it started, I have a tiny little Fiat at home, and uh, I was a dispatcher. And so every day um, I was calling the uh, recipients to let them know that we could deliver food and were they there and did they want us to come. And I was doing all of that sitting in the driver's seat of my car and putting little yellow stickies on the windows for the people who were going to be collecting and driving out with the food. So it really was uh, a startup organization. And um, it's grown now where the major food um, stores in our county do contribute food and where we're connected with almost all of the agencies that serve uh, food to the homeless people and impoverished people. So that's food rescue. Uh, then on the other side, we have um, the White Pony General Store. And um, that is, uh, that part of the organization provides clothing and shoes, uh, toys and children's books. And uh, again, well actually we do do deliveries to agencies, similarly to the food people. But um, we also do these things called boutiques. Um, we apparently love the name, but <laughs> yesterday I was meeting with Michelle Graham at the school and she said, do you mind if we call it a store? <laughs> that way people will know what it is. <laughs> so I was fine with that, of course. Um, but anyway, uh, it like the food side, it has grown considerably. Um, in um, We have reached out. It's, our ideal was to reach out for what's called dead stock clothing, which is uh, clothing manufacturers and the clothing that's out of season and that isn't selling. 
And um, that was hard to do in California because most of the clothing manufacturers are on the East Coast. So um, we weren't very successful with that endeavor in California, and we've sort of reinitiated that work uh, now that we're here in Myrtle Beach and have started to reach out to dead stock providers and also to um, clothing retail and wholesale stores for their dead stock, which isn't usually the same volume unless you manage to connect with their head office. So we have people who are, are working on that because the idea is that uh, we want to provide clothing that looks new, is new in this case, it's all going to be new clothes, well at least 95% of it is, and the idea is for people who are marginalized to be able to look and feel like part of the mainstream so that if they apply for a job, they look appropriate for, for that um, situation. Um, and so that's what the boutique is. And um, we started out by putting them on in um, the White Pony School. And uh, people had to drive to come to us. And it didn't take us too, too long to realize that wasn't a very effective way to go. So that was when they became mobile. And uh, what that means is <laughs> that we have these absolutely crazy days where um, it, here we have a huge advantage because we have the day before in the school. Uh, that is not usually the case. So what happens is um, there are three elements to a boutique. Uh, the first one is the inventory. And so it takes us weeks to gather the inventory that we're going to use in a boutique because there are thousands of articles. And um, so we have been working, um, I think I heard some of you have been to the distribution space um, in Myrtle Beach, and you know that it's uh, on the first floor of a very lovely home there. And the first floor is dedicated to this purpose. And um, so clothing comes in and um, we process it all, which means um, we iron it if it needs ironing, we take off the price tags, um, we sort it all, we uh, hang it on um, racks and fold it up and put it in boxes and put it in bins um, because it all has to be transported to the boutique. So that takes weeks of work. Um, and we, are, we have a, a spreadsheet that says uh, if we're going to have this many people uh, so many women, then we need so many size, eights and tens and twelves and so forth and so on. And the same with children's wear, toddlers, grade, you know, one, two, three, four. And so we try and uh, get a spread. In California, we've done over 55 of these boutiques. So, uh, in fact, we did one in June for about the same number of people, for about 500 people. And so, We've worked very hard to take learnings from the A each time, although this time everything is different. So <laughs> we're very, we were, we've got some, our learnings, but then you know how they can kind of crash apart when you have to do something entirely different. But I'm just saying then that from the inventory perspective, we have the experience, and so that's what we've been working with. And uh, I feel very happy about the inventory that I've seen over at the distribution center, there's lovely, lovely clothes there uh, for uh, men, women, uh, teen girls, teen boys, uh, and children, girls and boys. And then there are some lovely, lovely books and toys and accessories. So um, I know that um, people who have been working in that distribution center have been working very hard to get ready for this day, and I think it will show in the uh, inventory that we'll be bringing. So that's the inventory. Um, then the second important, probably the first most important thing in a boutique are the guests. Um, 
it's always hard to know how many people will come, especially the first time. Uh, in California now, we many of the places where we're having our boutiques are places we've been before, and so the neighborhood knows who we are, and the word is out, and so we can pretty much figure out how many people are going to come. But uh, when we go someplace new for the first time, uh, people don't know who the White Pony General Store is, and um, and so that's why we have the flyers, and that's why we're reaching out to people. And I think that you may know that the main focus of our guests this time, we thought it was the White Pony Elementary School until about five days ago, when <laughs> we learned, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I misspoke, didn't I? The Myrtle Beach Elementary School. And about five days ago, we learned that, no, that's not the name of the school where we're having it this boutique, it's at the primary school. So we quickly had to reprint all of our flyers and uh, because uh, at the same time we learned the, the Myrtle Beach, it wasn't like a new name for the same school, the, the Myrtle Beach Elementary School moved somewhere else. So it would be very confusing to people and they might go to the wrong place. So we had to redo our flyers. Um, but in, so in this case, we wanted to start by focusing on the families of that school uh, who our understanding is there's a fairly broad population of students in that school who come from homes who really can't afford to have nice clothing. So um, we are working with the principal of that school, with Michelle Green Graham and her team, and uh, she is feeling very positive that we'll get, our target is 500 people. I think there are 500 children at the school, so that's 500 families. Uh, so if people, I, I, I mean the math sounds like it, it should work. Um, and it's one of the things for us that we do ahead of time is to say, well, okay, we have so many pieces of inventory over here, and we're expecting so many guests over here. And so we do a little bit of math that says, therefore, each guest can have so many pieces of clothing. And that's always a little tricky, uh, because we never really know for sure what the count is. And that is the situation here. Um, so oftentimes, uh, what we do, um, we, we figure that out, and it's usually somewhere between seven pieces of clothing and ten pieces of clothing per person. And that's where we'll be with this one, too. Um, so then uh, the first, uh, I'll come back to that. Um, the third element is the volunteers. And um, we have sort of a core group of uh, White Pony General Store volunteers. And fortunately, many of them are going to be here. And that's really helpful because they do understand the uh, inventory they're, they're working with. So for instance, the two fellows who will be coordinating the men's department uh, have worked in that department many times. And they're used to serving men. And if fellows don't know what size, they want a dress shirt and they don't know what size they are, then they know how to measure them and how to pick the right shirt for them. And uh, the people in the book department are uh, used to working with children and understanding the reading levels of children and what books would be fun for them. So we do have uh, uh, maybe about two dozen of us who have come in from California who have worked many boutiques. And we'll be coordinating all the different departments. And then uh, the rest of the volunteers that we have will be community volunteers like yourselves. I think many of you are going to be there, which is lovely. And uh, Michelle Graham from the school uh, has reached out to her staff and the staff of the other schools that are on that same campus. And she actually told me when I met with her yesterday that they were going to have a hundred volunteers. I almost fell over <laughs> sideways. <laughs> so 
I think that my picture is that, that we will have um, a, a sort of a core group of volunteers, and then we'll have people who are new. And um, so because of people, who, uh, the new people, we're, we're going to have two training sessions. One is going to be Friday afternoon at the school at 3, and the other is going to be Saturday morning at 8.45 at the school. Both of those training sessions will be right in the boutique, and the boutique will be set up by that time. So you're welcome to attend either of those. Cassandra? Yeah, Laura. Is, Laura, the, right? is the same information going to be at the, at the two? Are the, are the two sessions for the same information, or yes. are they two different? No, okay. they're the same. Okay. The same. Thank oh. you. And uh, then we uh, are anticipating that people will just drop in during the day. And so we are kind of wrapping our heads around that and how to deal with it because a lot of people won't want to be there for the whole day. So I think what we're going to do is just put together a very brief orientation, uh, which either I will do or one of my other companions, and um, we'll just do it face-to-face -face on the spot and then bring people onto the floor. And uh, so that's how the, the volunteers will work. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I think we'll have all the volunteers we need, so I'm very happy about that. So then, um, any questions so far? F feel free to ask questions if you'd like. Uh, so then, what happens is this. If you can picture pennies shrunk down, um, you know, and it, that it's an empty building, and uh, fortunately, as I said, we do have this one day ahead because we have to turn an empty gymnasium into a department store. And uh, uh, so we, we begin, I, I'm sorry I can't show you, but you, you'll, you'll see, those of you who come to the training will see it, and certainly you'll see it when you walk in the door. We begin our work uh, with a map in this case of the gymnasium. And uh, so we measure the space and then, then we figure out how we're gonna lay out the store. And like I said, it's just like this, only shrunk down. So the men's department would be here and the women's department is here and then the girls and then the boys and then the teens and the shoes in the middle and toys go somewhere else and the books are somewhere else. And so we have uh, one of our companions who's uh, practiced at that now. It's quite an art, and he's very good at doing that. So that's where we begin. And then um, for the upcoming boutique on Friday, uh, we will arrive at the school, I think 10 a.m. is our start time, and uh, we'll have these maps of the store uh, up on the wall, and we'll begin transporting. So. Um, when we do this in California, we usually have to go a fair distance from our distribution center. So we rent these great big trucks and we fill up a truck and the truck goes out to the boutique. But in this case, the school is, as you may know, is only about four blocks away from the distribution center. So we have, rent, we have a little van and we have a U-Haul. And uh, all day long, at least all morning for sure, they'll be going back and forth between the distribution center and the school. So we'll have people at the distribution center who, the first thing we take over is gonna be tables. The school already has chairs, but obviously you have to start with what we call the infrastructure. Um, so we put, uh, take over all the tables and we set them up according to this map. Here's the men's, here's the women's. And we put up our little signs. And um, then we put on tablecloths. And then we start bringing the inventory over. And that's all in, in Brian's already done some work with our bins and boxes. So they are in bins and boxes. And uh, one of the things that's, I think, important about our boutiques, uh, we run them in what's, what we call sessions. And uh, for this boutique, we're going to have three sessions, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 1 o'clock. And all, what, the reason we do that is because 
we didn't want a mad rush of people at the beginning all, uh, you know, trying to pushing around, trying to get at the inventory, and it's too crowded, <coughs> and it's too frantic. So we want uh, to be able to offer the same opportunity for the clothing and to do it three times. So uh, if you're talking to anyone who is a guest or talking to people who are planning to, to come, that's the idea. The three sessions will offer the same count of inventory. Everybody will have the same opportunity to shop. So um, when, when people arrive uh, on the day of the boutique, um, we, we give out tickets. And uh, so we'll give out the 150 tickets for session one. If I, I don't think I have that number right. Anyway, we give out the tickets for session one. And then if we run out of those tickets, we start giving tickets for session two and then session three. And um, so that seems to be a way that is successful for us of working with 500 people and not having all 500 in the space at this one time. But, of course, what that means, and this is why our boutiques are so complicated and why we have so many volunteers, um, when we pack, we have to pack for three sessions, three stores. So we have like uh, one session of uh, children's clothes and for session one, and then another dinner box, session two, and another dinner box, session three. They're color coded to match the tickets that we give our guests. And um, so when the store happens, uh, the to this time that we have the day before, so that's great. So we're going to put all the session one materials out, and that will include everything that goes on the tables and uh, racks of clothing as well. And then at eleven o'clock, we open the door, and usually the first session is the busiest. People are anxious and not everybody understands clearly the concept of the three sessions and so they like to make sure that they're there for the first session and can get the clothes they need. So um, the door opens and, and people flood in and, um, and, and they are welcome to, uh, by the time they through, come through the door, uh, we have people who talk to them in the lineup, and this is where Spanish is going to be really helpful, uh, to explain how it works. Um, and here's your bag, and you know, you can take seven items or ten items or whatever it is, and this is the kind of inventory you'll see once you go through the door. So when they come through the door, they have that understanding. And um, so those of us who are volunteers, it, it, we have this flood of people, it's sort of like a tsunami of people coming through the door. And uh, we're busy serving our guests as best we can. Uh, we want to be sensitive, of course, to whether or not there are people who want service. Some people are quite happy to pick their own things and, and not have help, but other people like to have help doing it. And uh, so we do that. We, we help those guests who, who want help. And the store is open for 40 minutes. And then uh, we have a master of ceremonies. And at 40 minutes, we say, well, I think if we start about 10 minutes and say, well, in 10 minutes, the store is going to close. And uh, so at, at 40 minutes, this first session stops. And then, we, this is prime where we need people who can lift, because then we have 20 minutes to put all the session two stuff out. So if there's any session one stuff, it's still there, and then we add all the session two stuff to it. And that means just like the store here, you, you, one of the very important things I think about for people who are looking for clothes, uh, I know, um, you know, I think you probably all know there were terrible forest fires in California last summer, and uh, the White Pony Express provided food and clothing to victims of the fire. And I, when I first saw uh, where some of those um, fire refugees were, 
they were intense in the parking lot, like in the malls, like here. And people were donating clothing for them. But uh, it was, on the day <coughs> I saw this, it was pouring rain. And the clothing was just piled up like this. So there was no way. You, you couldn't, you know, it was scary to look at the pile. And um, so it's really important that if you're a woman and you know that you wear a size 14 dress, that you can walk up to a rack with a sign that says 14 and easily find the clothes you want. So we take um, pain to make sure that it looks just like you would expect here in a department store. So that means that when things are put on the table, they're put in according to their sizes and put on the racks according to their sizes and everything like that. And so we do that within 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in, every time we do a boutique, it's in a different place, and so some places are easier than others. I was so happy to see this gymnasium yesterday. Um, the school is a beautiful school. And they've been working very hard all summer cleaning it. Um, and the floors have all been cleaned and they're polished and they, they shine, absolutely shine. It's, it's, the gymnasium is full of light and I was so happy to see it. It, it, it will be a lovely, lovely location to do this. So uh, the, the line of people coming in will be in the cafeteria and then they come through the door and into the gym and, and then we uh, the boutique is in the gym. So 20 minutes we have to restock everything, take a deep breath, and then we open the doors again for session two. So uh, we try to have our, our volunteers uh, take their breaks and come and go from the floor as necessary. Yeah, uh, it's a long day for those of us who are working the whole day and we need to take a break and have lunch and have something to eat. Uh, so we, uh, that's something we figure out kind of on the spot. I've asked Michelle if there's a room where people can, um, we ask our volunteers to bring something. If you're volunteering, if you, please be sure and bring a snack or a lunch or something like that to, so that you've got something. Um, and I've asked Michelle if there's a room where we can have our volunteers be comfortable and have a little bit of downtime and take a snack if they want it. But I haven't heard from her yet uh, where that might be, but I'm hoping it, that will work out. So, um, so, and then it all starts over again uh, at the second session. And the doors open, and the second group of people come in. and. Uh, usually by the end of the first session, we have a better idea of how many guests we're going to have. So if we don't get the number that we were expecting, um, I think many of you know Terry Johnson. Um, she, what, she, what we'll do is let Terry know. And Terry is familiar with communities around the school who could use clothing and might not have been invited because their children don't go to the school. If we find that we have enough clothing to be able to invite additional people, then we're going to let Terry know, and she'll outreach in these communities that she's familiar with. Uh, I think, though, what we want to be cautious about is uh, not overreaching our invitation list, uh, because we don't want to disappoint people. Don't, we don't want people to f come and not have clothes for them. That would not be a happy experience. We don't know for sure, but we're <coughs> expecting that we'll be doing more than this one boutique here. So um, uh, if we have clothes that are left after this boutique, they'll go back to the distribution center and they'll be used again at a future boutique. But that's why we're a little cautious about overextending our guest invitation. And uh, so that's the way the boutiques run. And then uh, at 1.40, when it's all over, um, we pack up everything that's left. And then we pack up all the tables and chairs and tablecloths and put them in the truck. And back they go to the distribution center. <laughs> and then we have a bunch of very tired volunteers. <laughs> And 
that's the way the day goes. But it is marvelous. Uh, it is a, a joy to be there. And um, we want for our guests to feel honored, to, to feel respected. Um, and so it's important to us that all of the volunteers who work with us are happy to treat people with that in mind. And uh, because of that, uh, it works. I think that the guests do feel that, and um, it's, a, it's a very wonderful thing for them to be able to get new stylish dresses and not worry about how much they cost, or, you know, new shoes for the children. And uh, some of the clothes are designer brand clothes, and very lovely. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to a very special event. And I think it will be fun for all. I hope it will be fun for all. Anybody have any other questions about it? Yeah, Dennis. Would you uh, like to be perhaps more specific in some of your success stories in terms of how these, these boutiques have changed people's lives? To the extent that, you know, I know one that you have in your video that has been shown before that um, um, Hispanic gentleman who looked so dapper in a suit yes. and was able to get a job. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, we wish we had more, uh, you know, specific stories. Um, we don't often, we don't record who the guests are. Um, you know, they, they come and they're welcome. And, uh, and generally speaking, we know the population we serve, but we don't know who's specifically who the people are. So that's a challenge for us, because that's something that the organization would like to be able to concretely say. Um, and in a few uh, cases, they are able to do that. Um, I, I think we are going to, I know we are going to take photographs at this boutique. Sometimes we can't do that because our guest population isn't comfortable with that. And um, to do that, it requires that when people come in, we ask for photo releases. And if they don't want their photos taken, we've got little badges that say, no photos, please. Um, but uh, I can't really give you, you know, statistics or facts about that. Cassandra? Yeah. I've seen some of those videos. They're pretty neat. Um, uh -huh. Where could people go to watch them if they wanted to? Um, let's see. Did you see them from our website? I think some. I think uh, I. It was either the White Pony Express or Free General Store. I'm not sure yeah. which. But if you gave the web address, people could. Yes. Look at. Them. Sure. Um, uh, we do have a website. Um, we're, we're, <laughs> we're like, but it's all about California. But so we quickly made a page about Myrtle Beach. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and have a sign up, uh, which is specifically for Myrtle Beach. Uh, but we're going to have to broaden our perspective and our website <laughs> for that purpose. For those who get the circle news, both in the, this issue and the last issue, you will see a big write-up on this with the link that you can just click on it. It will take you to the page she's referring to. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. Sign up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that is, and from that page, you can uh, visit the website, all the all the different um, tabs and places there. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Any other questions? Can yeah. maybe describe uh, specifically the volunteer roles? Okay, yeah. Um, well, first of all, as I've already mentioned, uh, we like for all of our volunteers to understand how we want to serve the guests, how, how we want to treat the guests. And um, so when we have our, our training, our orientations, that's one of the things that we cover. And then um, we want our volunteers to understand their jobs. Uh, if you're in the toy department, then um, you should have some understanding of the different types of toys. Some of them are active toys, some of them are educational toys, 
some of them are plush toys. Um, and, uh, or if you're in the girls' department, you know, understanding the, the inventory that, that you're about to share with the guests. Um, and uh, so that's another part of what we show our guests, and, or I mean our volunteers. And then, um, then the whole concept that I've just described about the stores and the, and the uh, restocking because it happen, needs to happen so quickly, uh, we also like for our volunteers to understand what it means to restock. At the last boutique uh, that we did in California, we found that some of our people didn't understand this idea about the three uh, sessions. And the, as I said, the bins are all color-coded, and so people were pulling clothes out of session three when it was session two and that really throws our inventory off. So that's an important concept, and when we do the training that I mentioned, we'll bring out some bins and boxes and um, show people what it looks like. When you pull things out of the bins and boxes too, there's a special way to put them on the tables or put them on the racks. Um, there, are, there are so many things that we've learned over all these years uh, like all the hangers go on in the same direction, <laughs> things like that. And then what to do with the hangers. We have a, what we call a hanger management team. And <laughs> that's because people take clothes off the hangers and the hangers end up on the floor. And there's, you know, just the hangers all over the place. And so we have a team that this is where I usually give the uh, younger volunteers, the uh, daughters and sons of our volunteers. If you know anyone who wants to bring their children, then our age limit is 12. But any child or 12 or over is welcome to help. And this is a job I often give them because it's fun for them to do, and they run around and pick up the hangers. Then the hangers all go back in boxes, all facing in the same direction. And this, you know, pant hangers go here, and child hangers go here, and um, adult hangers go there. I mean, it, it, you don't really think about this until you're actually doing it and when you're trying to build a department store and open it and then tear it down in one day you you really learn about all of these things uh, because otherwise it just creates a whole lot more work. So those are the kinds of things that we share with our volunteers. And we have, um, and how many pieces of clothing each guest get, gets and um, how to manage children, what, what to do if uh, somebody's just standing in a rack, you're just pulling stuff off the rack and taking more, more than their share, um, those kinds of things like that. So are you allowing the volunteers to choose what they want to do? And do they need to have prior knowledge about toys or sizes? Are they going to be assigned? Uh, yeah. be Usually, uh, I do. Uh, I do that work. That's my job, and so um, that's people sign up ahead of time, and I go in with a, a, a map, so to speak, of who's in what department. But for this one, because I'm thinking that so many people will drop in on the day of, so when the rest of my team gets here. Uh, we have to figure out how best to manage that. Uh, we need to know, like if, we're, if we need to have six people in the women's department, let's say, uh, we would need to know, do we have six there? Or do we have two there, and therefore need four? So it's a combination of where would you like to work, and what are the needs on the floor? It's a bit of a dance, and it'll, that's probably going to be a bit of a challenge on, on this day. Yeah. Um, would you mind repeating what the volunteers on Friday would do? I know they'll be taking tables over. Sure, sure. Friday is very much physical work. Um, so that's the day that we're going to be um, moving. We have these two vehicles. We're going to be going back and forth between the distribution space, which is on 32nd Avenue, and the school, which is on 29th. And, uh, so we will have staged all the tables and the bins and the boxes and the racks on 32nd, and we'll be moving them over to 29th, and we will have people. The school has offered to have some of their athletic teams there on Friday. I was very thankful for that. 
Um, they're heavy, these bins and boxes. And uh, we do have dollies that we can get from the truck into the gym. But as Brian knows, once you get into the gym, um, session two and three have to be stored somewhere off the floor, probably on the stage. Unfortunately, their stage is only about this tall. Sometimes we've had really high stages. And um, if it's big enough, we can store two and three under the tables right in the departments. But what, that's what we'll be doing all day Friday until we have the store all set up. And then we'll do that training session. Judy? Um, well, somebody like Katie who can't do a lot of lifting, right. would there still be something for her to do? On, on Friday? Mm-hmm. There are some decorations, uh, but again, that's that's a little bit physical, but it's not heavy lifting. So we have paper flowers we're going to be putting up, and some signs we're going to put up, and things like that. So uh, if you if that's something that you can do, that, that would be fine. Thank you, Judy. If you want to sign up ahead of time, as if you you have Brian and Laura have. Uh, you're welcome to, then I know you're going to be there. Uh, and also, it, you can say, I'm going to be there Friday, but not Saturday, or Saturday, but not Friday. But um, many people uh, aren't familiar with the sign-up process, and that's kind of hard, and so I didn't want to make people sign up in order to come. So you're welcome to come. Uh, and. I was going to, I didn't bring the uh, actual shifts. I mean, I, I have it electronically, but I didn't bring it as, as paper. But I, I'll describe that. Uh, so on Friday, we start at 10, and uh, we plan on being done by 3, because at 3, we're going to start with the training. It's, it's scheduled for two hours, but I don't think it will take that long. And then on Saturday, um, the training is at 8.45. If you came to the training on Friday, then you uh, don't need to be there for that. Then you arrive at 9.45 instead. And, um, and then we do the final prep. We have uh, like a gathering of everybody that's there. Um, Mary will probably say a few words. Mary Brooks is our uh, executive director of the White Pony Express. And, um, and then you will have, if you're there before the first story, you'll have an opportunity to see the department you're in and learn a little bit about what, what the inventory is going to be like. Um, and, uh, and then because of the fact that many people can't work that whole long day. Uh, I'm anticipating people to come and go, and we're trying to monitor how, where the needs are and get people onto the right places on the store. I think that it would probably be easiest to make those shifts of volunteers during the restock, not, not when, when the, during the times, the 40 minutes when the store is open, there's a lot of people in the, Oh, and that's, maybe you don't know this too, but we have these aprons. That's how you know who's one of the staff and who's not. So we have these white aprons uh, that uh, have our, our logo, our, our heart on it. And uh, so therefore it's very easy to tell. People who are volunteering but who are also legitimate guests are welcome to shop. Um, and uh, the only thing we ask is that they, uh, they need to get a ticket, a guest ticket for one of the sessions and to take their apron off when they're shopping and return it to us. So, so that it doesn't look like one of the, the you know, people who's a staff is, is taking clothes. Uh, it's kind of uh, just our policy on that. Um, so it'll be a fun and a very busy day. Any other questions? Yeah. So I'm wondering, um, are we, we're not counting the things. The pe people just, it's just they take, set, they're told it's seven and whatever they, <coughs> they take, or, yeah. or what? 
Yeah. Yeah, you don't count it. Yeah. We have uh, often had people at the exits and uh, who just kind of watch people go by and if somebody's coming by with six bags full of clothes or something, they'll stop them. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then, you know, they ask them how many clothes they've got and why they're taking so many. And, uh, but no, we, 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 don't, we don't police it. We, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Anything else? I have yes. several sheets here, name, telephone, and email with pens. Great. So if you're interested, Wonderful. would you please? Thank you. I would very much appreciate that. I would, I'm looking forward to seeing many of you a week from Saturday. It would be fun. And some of you on Friday, too, if you're able to, to, to do that work, join that work. Okay. How long is the training on Friday afternoon? And it's morning? scheduled for two hours, but we, we're like, what are we going to say for two hours? <laughs> I don't think it'll take that long. But as you can see from what I've been saying today, it's complicated. And the more you're familiar with it before you get onto the floor, uh, the more familiar you're going to be with it. You know, it'll just be easier. Yeah. Are there chairs for volunteers, or will they we expect to be standing? That's a really good question. Uh, mostly you will be standing. There are some chairs, but mostly you'll be standing, so you're going to want to wear good shoes. We, we generally wear, um, well, not, uh, just, just sort of past, uh, the, uh, the aprons are white, and we generally wear light colored clothing. And they're, they're, they go over your head, and they're a front and a back. We call them tabards. They look like those things with signs on them. <laughs> Okay. All right. Lovely to meet you all. And I look forward to meeting you individually and hopefully seeing you week from Saturday or Friday. Thank you very much for inviting me.